betting uh, the not so much uh, anymore is more down to my own fault. Uh, I need to uh, I need to get studying again to to get the edge back. But yeah, it's a great product. I love the exchange. It's uh, it's really it's uh, in my opinion one of the better bookmakers, if not the best bookmaker out there. Race two will be the start of the place accumulator. Looks sharp, 1300 hours, one o'clock. It's over 1900 meters. It's a merit rated 91 handicap. So it is a B division, high division class. I see the average rating here is an 89. There's some quality to speak about, some more form to work around. And at the time of recording, all seven runners will go to post. Well, let's hear what Riley has to say. I mean, are you going with this uh, form line behind Royal Victory or are you looking elsewhere in race number two? Dees, I think it is uh, the form line that we've, we've got to be with because uh, obviously Pirate Prince ran a, ran a very, very good race and uh, turned the form around with Adabar on their penultimate start. But that run from Adabar was too bad to be true because he was well fancied on the day. MJ Odendahl expected him to win, to be quite frank with you, and he had a winner in the previous race and... It was all in the lead up, in the build up to this was uh, hopefully getting the job done and he just ran a below par race. I know he was only beaten two lengths but it didn't seem to be a true reflection of what MJ believes and thinks of the horse. So back uh, with Calvin Abib in the irons, he's got a three draw. Just having a look at, the, at this race itself, he, he does seem to be the horse that's going to be able to get cheap fractions out in front and we saw how he stole the race in his penultimate start from an 8 out of 13 draw with Calvin aboard. I think he could certainly turn the form around with Pirate Prince but um, the way Pirate Prince ran on last time out, it's, he's got to be a horse that uh, you include into the mix and Richard Free gets the ride and they obviously meet on similar weight terms once again so there shouldn't be a lot to choose between the two of them and they could most likely fight it out and then if the guys are looking for maybe an, an lurker for those uh, Places. I think number five, Bella Sikom, Rachel Venica aboard, she's having a peak run, she enjoys the turf, track and trip suits, so maybe she could be a nice horse to include, and uh, last time out, Beeson behind Cedar Gain, I think Cedar Gain and Kay Beagle, they were well clear off the opposition on, on, the, on that day, and there was some testing conditions on that day as well, D. so maybe she could be one for traffic design quartets, and maybe even an upset type in this type of race. Okay, this is what I'm going to say, Ariel. Firstly, I'm going to say to all the racing fans, the valued racing fans out there, go to the Gold Circle YouTube site, uh, press on videos. All the videos will come up on that home screen. You need to scroll right down to uh, the exact date is the 15th of October. When you get to the 15th of October, you'll see a few videos come up. You need to scroll on each one to see which race it is. You'll see the winner will be Royal Victory. That's the replay I want you to watch. I'm going to give you two things here. Number one, Adabar runs his best races when he's in front. And last time out with Cape Eagle in the race, he was never going to get to the front. And then Cape Town Affair, who's in the race, tried to make it even more difficult going around the outside and trying to vie for that early position, which Adabar doesn't enjoy. You know, he wants to be in front and control things. But more importantly, you are going to be shocked. Go and watch this replay. Over the final 200 meters, Serena Mudley had so much a horse left. And he was going for a gap, and the gap was there. It was there. And as he went for the gap, Cape Eagle started moving across and moving across badly. And himself and Pirate Prince got very close. And Serena had to check so badly that he actually stood up in the irons. He didn't ride the horse. And for the horse to still stay on for fifth beat in two lengths, and I can promise you, I'm not saying you would have beaten Royal Victory that had a clear run on the inside running rail, because that was the, the runway, clear the runway for Royal Victory. But I'm not saying he could have beaten Royal Victory, but I'm almost certain that he could be fighting out for second that day if he went through that gap, which close shutting his face. So go and have a look at that victory. I'm saying that if Adabar gets to the front and Cape Town Affair was in the race, doesn't vie for that early position as he did last time out. And I think with an experienced rider like Gavin Lorena is drawn wide, if he's not going to get to the front, he's not going to fight a horse to get there. So, if Adabar gets to the front, has things his own way, I say he reverses the form with Pirate Prince. Those are the only two runners I'm going to include in the pick six. Numbers three and four. But for the place accumulator, the suggested bet I've given, I'll bank at number three, Adabar. At the time of recording, Adabar's two to one and Pirate Prince is 14 to 10, so you know where my money will be.
most definitely. At about two to one in the market, the top selection for Diz in this contest over 1900 meters, and he's going to be a banker in the first leg of the place accumulator. It's Donovan Everture from Cape Racing and uh, I'd just like to say it's an absolute pleasure to be involved with uh, Interbet and Cape Readers in this, uh, in this golf day today here at Pearl Valley. Um, it's fantastic for the industry to see all the relevant stakeholders coming down and having a good time and networking and it's exactly what the, the industry needs right now in terms of moving forward and recreating some positivity to take us forward into the next year.